Welcome to another how-to video on next-gen mini hydraulic excavators. Today we're going to be looking at how to connect a select number of hydromechanical tools quickly and efficiently to the next-gen hydraulic mini excavators. Those tools are going to include removing a TRS-4 from a 304, the new G308 grapple on and off the next-gen 309 high flow machine and also using that high flow machine picking up an HM210 mulcher. So we're up here in the next gen 304. First thing I'm going to do is to remove this S style bucket from this TRS4 on the machine. Now this is a single lock coupler, the S type. So I'm just going to go ahead and unlock the rear and I'm just going to go ahead and roll out of it. And then once we got the bucket off, I'm just going to swing across Put the head on the floor, gently, not too much pressure, just up off the floor. I'm gonna switch the engine off, engine back on, and do our standard procedure with the safety brace down. Just roll out the hydraulics to remove the pressure from those lines. And you can see the linkage and everything relaxing on the machine. So rolling all the auxiliary rollers, shaking out the joysticks, and that pressure should be off the lines. So now that we've laid the pressure off, you can see these lines are loose, so we know they're not under pressure, which is really good to go ahead and undo. So we'll take one off the left-hand side and just take the one off the right-hand side as well. Now on this machine and this tool, this TRS-4, we have two couplers. We have a lower coupler and we have the upper coupler. So right now we've got one machine, one monitor controlling two couplers. Uh, this is a safety device right here. This is so we don't drop everything off and rip our hoses and rip our electrics. So what I'm going to do now is swap my uh, coupler electrics over. We won't need that one. We'll make sure that's not going to be in the way. When we release it, make sure that's not in the dirt. And we will put our dummy plug over onto the other side. Now the machine will be looking at the dual lock coupler on the top and we will go ahead and take our TRS-4 off. Okay, so we're now back up in the machine. I've swapped over control now on my monitor to my upper coupler, the door lock coupler. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unlock the wedge at the back, roll out. Okay, now we've got the TRS-4 head off. We're gonna swing across and we're going to use the door lock coupler to pick up our normal standard 24 inch heavy duty bucket. Now one of the things about hooking onto this bucket is make sure you're not too close to the machine. You want a little bit of distance, pick it up, roll it over, and lock the wedge. The beeping in the machine will stop. And I like always, whenever you move a bucket, just test it, make sure the front of the machine jacks up, and you know you are good to go. So we're talking about the ultimate versatility. We've removed our TRS-4, and we're gonna go back to a standard machine. Uh, TRSs are great, they're not for all applications, they do add weight to the machine. Sometimes you just want your normal standard thumb bucketing coupler. Last thing I need to do is to use this little tool that comes with all the thumb kits. Turn the diverter valve on the left hand side, turn the diverter valve on the right hand side. And now when I hop back into the machine, we've gone from a TRS machine to a thumb bucket and coupler machine as quickly as that. And so there we have it. Back to a thumb and bucket on the machine, quick and as simple as that. And there we have it, simply going from a TRS-4 to a standard machine. And when you want to go back to the TRS-4, you just do exactly the same thing in reverse. So basically you can put a TRS-4 on and off of this machine in less than five minutes. Now let's go over and look at the 309. So now we're gonna have a look at the G308 demolition and sorting grapple. One of the key things about putting this on the machine is looking for this pin. Now, if this was a bucket, you always have one pin higher than the other one. The pin that's higher always goes closer to the machine or under the stick nose. Now, you can pick this up the wrong way around, but if you do, it doesn't spin flat when it's close to the ground. Nobody's gonna enjoy operating it like that. So, a bit of a rookie mistake. You can pick this up from either side, but you wanna make sure that the higher pin is always underneath the stick and not over there on the power link. And that applies to some TRSs as well that are using grapples. You just need to make sure you pick them up the right way around. Okay, so we're now up in the next gen 309 CR 
with the high flow, which is a dedicated aux pump. Uh, basically, my coupler, my dual lock coupler is off at the moment. So I'm gonna go out, oh, it's locked, I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it. And what you wanna do, you can look to see where that is, but in order to snap on to a dual lock coupler, you wanna rotate back and sort of come down on top of it. And once you hear that click, you can go ahead and pick up because we've already locked this on on the front. You'll see it's just hanging there. And then I can roll over. And once I rolled over, go ahead and re-lock that wedge. Beeping goes off. And once again, uh, just gonna check it, make sure it's on, clearly on. Now I'm just gonna reach out with this. Now this is a pretty big tool. So you wanna get this low enough so that you can easily get to the QD. So I'm just gonna stretch all the way out and I'm gonna put the uh, tines close to the ground. Once again, don't put them in the closed position. If you take this off in the closed position, it's actually gonna tighten up and create pressure. So once again, I'm gonna bleed the pressure off. I'm just gonna make sure the left and right side are both on the ground the same. I'm gonna switch the engine off, leave the safety brace down, switch the engine back on again, and once again, roll my auxiliary rollers first, backwards and forwards, taking pressure off the QDs on the machine side, and then I'm just gonna take off the pressure. Our machines have an accumulator. The accumulator allows for the pressure to be pulled off back the tank. Shake all of those out, and then I should be able to put those hydraulic lines on nice and easy onto the machine. So the G308 uses first ox and second ox. I've already attached the first ox and the second ox over on the other side. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach the first ox on this side. Now, as this thumb is locked off, one of the things that you can do is put the hose through the thumb. That'll just stop this flapping around. Now we have first ox, second ox, and case drain. Uh, the next gen machines label these. Uh, it is possible on some tools to put the case drain into the second ox because they use the same size QDs. Here you can't go wrong because it's been matched on left to right. So we're just going to go ahead and put our main ox on and we're going to go ahead and put our second ox through the thumb because the thumb cannot operate because it's locked out. We're going to put it to the second ox. Now on this side, what I mean you can't go wrong is that it's male and male. So this one you're okay with, but sometimes in some other tools, it is possible to go ahead and put the second ox into the case drain, which one will not make the tool work. But if you put the case drain, more importantly, into the second ox, you could have some issues. And we're going to talk about that in a moment on our next tool. But now we got this hooked up, let's just see how it works. So we've gone ahead and we've got the G308 on this next gen machine, 309. Now the 309 in North America comes standard with a long undercarriage. So you got uh, one foot longer, six inches wider. So a lot of great stability for when you're doing sort of demolition sorting with this machine. Now, there is a diverter valve on this. So if I use the roll on the left hand side, that's going to be my house swing. If I hit the diverter valve on top, which is the circular button, and now I have rotation 360. Now this is not a TRS. This is a dedicated rotating grapple, no tilt. And my roller on the other side will be my gripping. Now, as you can see, we go cutting edge to cutting edge so we can pick up and sort the smallest of items, pull wire through, pull steel bands out of wood pallets, etc. Or we can pick up very big items of material at one time. Okay, so when you go to take this tool off, you need to reach out as far as you can because those QDs are pretty high. And then you wanna lower it close to the ground and you wanna make sure that the grapple is not fully open because when you relieve the pressure, we'll tighten it up some more. So close the grapples a little bit and then put it just resting onto the ground, make sure left and right is about the same. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch my engine off turn my engine back on and the first thing I'm going to do is to roll the auxiliaries several times take your time in doing this make sure you're getting all the oil out of that tool so next time you come to pick it up it's not pressurized and then once you rolled out the auxiliaries shake out the hydraulics and take the pressure off the G308 so there we go let's go ahead and disconnect this. 
Okay, so we stretch this all the way out, so these are at a reasonable height to get to. Uh, I can see they are loose, so they're not under pressure. So it doesn't matter which one you do first, I'm gonna do the top one, take off the second ox, back through the thumb. No pressure on that one. Back through, put the protective cap back on. And then if I'm gonna go ahead and drop this off and pick up a standard bucket, and go back to a thumb and bucket machine, I would turn my diverter valves back on and make sure the thumb is running. And for those who are just watching closely, I've already taken off the first and second ox on the other side. So there's the G308 on and off the machine and how to connect it up. Now we're gonna take the 309 with a dedicated ox pump and put on an HM210 mulcher. Okay, so I've just dropped off my G308 grapple. You can hear my coupler, my dual lock coupler is in the open position so i'm just going to go ahead and swing over and pick up this hm210 mulcher first once again i'm going to sort of position myself where i can see the lower part and then i am going to rack back and come down onto my tool hear that click go ahead and pick it up it's going to swing there i want to go ahead and roll over and then we'll go ahead and lock my main wedge and this one I don't have to reach out as far because the QDs are going to be lower. The tool is not as high. But I'm going to go ahead and push it all the way out there. And once again, we will bleed off pressure, put it close to the ground. I'm going to bleed off pressure before I put the tool on to take the pressure off the machine side. Uh, key off, safety brace, hydraulic still down. And then I'll go ahead and roll my auxiliaries. forward and backwards take your time doing this you want to make sure you get all the pressure off the machine side and then shake out all your joysticks and you will see the machine start to relax and that way there should be no pressure on the machine when you go to attach the tool so the HM208 and the HM210 you cannot put on the machine the wrong way around you have the hydraulics over here on the machine side and you can just check that the higher pin is underneath the stick so you know that's all right but once you get it in there, this side is the case strain. You can see I have put it onto the case strain side. I've not put it in the second ox. That would not be good. And we've got a male and a female. This has already been split in, in, the, in the elephant trunk in order to get it to the right side. So you shouldn't be able to go wrong. Now let's go over and look at the other side. So over on this side, we've got first ox and we've got our electrics. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and put my first ox on at the first ox position got that on and then with the electrics there is a larger pin at the top so instead of fighting with it make sure you get that pin in tighten it up and you are good to go there on your electric side and we've once again gone through the thumb on both sides the thumb is not operational this will stop those hoses from flopping around and give them some extra protection another thing to look out for uh, when you put the hoses on these whether you do it, whether your shop does it, make sure that these uh, connections are not straight up. Because if they're straight up, and as you curl this up, it is possible to con contact the underside of the thumb with these QDs. So they want to be laying over at 45 degrees. Both of these, they can lay over left or right. These are laying over to the right. Put the python through, the elephant nose, whatever you want to call it, and onto the machine. So now we're ready to work. This thing is good to go. HM208, HM210. One of the things remember, whenever you take a hydromechanical tool off the machine, always bleed the pressure off. It makes it life so much easier when you go to put it back on again. That applies to hammers, mulchers, mowers, grapples, any of those things. Bleeding the pressure off the machine before you connect something bleeding the pressure off before you remove something is key for you not to get frustrated when hooking up and unhooking hydromechanical tools. For further information, contact your local cat dealer and look out for further how-to videos on YouTube.